There's been a lot of talk about space exploration and with accessible space travel, not too many light years away. But what if I told you that you could reach for the stars without ever leaving WA? The Perth Observatory was founded long before Neil Armstrong took those first steps on the moon. Built in 1896, that's right, it's 125 years young, the Perth Observatory is the oldest in WA. First located on Mount Eliza, it now resides in the rolling hills of the Bickley Valley. Now, I have a bit of a personal connection to the Perth Observatory. Not only has it been instrumental in space research and discovery, but historically, it's also where the WA weather reports come from. And today, I'm meeting up with Tour Administrator Matt Woods. This is a beautiful piece of equipment. Tell me a little bit about it. Yeah, so this is the George Calver Telescope, or we just call, lovingly call it the Calver Telescope. So this is the first publicly viewable telescope for Perth. So they were, back at the beginning, they were doing astronomical research and doing public nights. And the public nights were very popular like they are today, and uh, they're eating into research time. So they got this telescope so that they could do astronomy research, plus show the amazing objects in the night sky. So the observatory is mostly run by volunteers now? Yes, yeah, so the volunteer group took over the running of the observatory in 2015. When I joined 2014, we had about 80 members and we've got about 200 now. So it's great because we can put all that experience into running the observatory and really improving what we offer. And I hear there's even an author in the mix. Yeah, so Jan's written two books. Uh, we've had one about Artemis the fairy and also about the oral history of the observatory as well. And what would be great for kids as well to yeah, learn a little bit well. about it. Yeah, so there's, there's fairy dolls around the observatory so you can read about it and then go do the day tours during on Sunday and actually see all the fairy dolls as well. How cool is that? Well, you guys do some great work here, but it has evolved over the last few years. So tell us a bit about that. Yeah, so back in 2012, well, we finished up official research here. We've gone more to science outreach, getting the public interested in space and astronomy. And you can see over the last decade or so, space has really become a big thing again. You can really feel the care that Matt and the rest of the volunteers put into the work here at the observatory. They not only run daytime and night sky tours for all ages, but they also dedicate many hours to public outreach and education, refurbishment and development. In the past three years alone, they've even built an outdoor amphitheatre, bush gardens and expanded their interactive programs. Summer's coming up, so that means some clear nights. If people are interested in astrophotography, what sort of things do they have at the Perth Observatory? So we do offer workshops where you get to learn how to take photos of the night sky. Make sure your ISO is 1600, just because it's a little bit hot, so you don't get noise. Uh, have 20, take 20 second exposures. If your camera can do 30, do 30. And uh, also have your F ratio around that two to three mark. Next time you see those beautiful WA clear skies, head up here and explore and check out one of their 200 plus events a year. There are so many different tours on offer here at the Perth Observatory, but if a guided tour is not really your thing, well, you can make your way through the museum yourself, come and check out one of their public talks or even pick up a skill. Make sure you check out this website to see how you can get involved at the Perth Observatory, maybe even become a volunteer.